known as the land of the gods to the ancient Egyptians. Somalia's natural features and geographical position should be a recipe for success. So uh, in the Horn of Africa, during the colonial period, there was an interesting uh, mix of people who were vying for control of, of that particular very strategic area that kind of goes up towards the Gulf states into the Red Sea. And so you had uh, European powers, including the French, the Italians, the British, all competing for control of the territories. For years, Somalian merchants traded spices and commodities from her ports to and from the Indian subcontinent. So it's no wonder that European colonialists wanted to gain control of her ports in the rich waters of the Gulf of Aden. In the 1880s, Somalia was carved up by the British, French and Italians. Kenya and Ethiopia also took a share. But half a century later, the British appetite to govern in far-flung places has waned, as has the tolerance of those being governed. All that as you like. It is complete independence that we want. In 1960, Harold Macmillan's Wind of Change speech rings in the end of colonial Britain in Asia, Africa, and the Caribbean. Somalia is one of 17 African nations to be given back their freedom and the right to control their own future. On gaining independence in 1960, British Somaliland merges with Italian Somaliland, creating a new republic called Somalia. On paper, this should be a happy union most of the population have similar ethnic backgrounds. They also speak the same language. But the reality is very different. There are what we call four and a half clans, major clans in Somalia. And then the other half is made up of hundreds. Every clan is made up of subclans, is made up of families. There's an old motto in Somalia that first my clan, then my subclan, then my family, then myself, and only myself really matters. These hundreds of clans will battle and fight for power and land, making Somalia ungovernable. So Somalia was broken up into this very fragmented patchwork of different territories that were constantly shifting because different clans were fighting each other, becoming uh, victorious one moment, losing territory the next. So it was immense flux. And then you look at the Americans coming into this situation, trying to initially provide some kind of humanitarian mission in terms of protecting aid convoys. And they just got dragged into a situation that they had no proper understanding of. A situation which will ultimately boil over, leading to some of the most vicious terrorist attacks the world has ever seen, and the loss of many thousands of lives. <laughs>